Olympics. I want to talk to Sonsera Taylor. She has been here for two weeks and waiting for this decision. When it came down, your, your react. This is the state violence against women. This is an absolute atrocity. It is illegitimate. It is illegitimate for this Supreme Court packed with theocratic fascist judges appointed by an illegitimate president, Donald Trump, to give the state the right to hijack women's bodies, to treat their wombs like surveillance sites, and to drag women in to court to put them on trial and lock them up if they induce their own abortions, if they travel to other states to get abortions. Forcing women to have children against their will is a form of enslavement. It is barbaric, and this is 100% illegitimate. It is infuriating. It is outrageous, and no one should accept it. And I think anybody with any ounce of decency, humanity, love for women, concern about justice, concern about LGBTQ rights, because those are next, Con uh, contraception is next, all of the rights that are undergirded by the same foundation as Roe are on the line now. We need to be in these streets. We need to rise up a nonviolent, massive, sustained. It's beautiful here now. It needs to grow every day, millions strong, until this building, this body. The Capitol Con Hill. Yeah, Congress or the White House acts to restore legal nationwide abortion across this country on demand now. This is absolutely, women cannot be free if they don't control their own bodies and reproduction. So you're an activist, what's next? What do you do next? We're calling on people to rise up in the streets and, and massively flood the streets. I have the green bandana on. This is the green bandana that came out of Argentina. It was taken up in Colombia, in Mexico, places where women, where abortion was criminalized very patriarchal, very repressive societies, very Catholic societies. People went in the streets and they demanded legal abortion and they struggled day after day, night after night. They brought thousands and they brought millions and they tore down the criminalization of abortion. And we need that same flooding of the streets from below, thousands strong, millions strong. We need to bring this society to a halt through nonviolent mass disruptive protest and resistance. And I'm not talking about one day, like the Women's March or Planned Parenthood, one symbolic day, then you go home and you wait for November for the Democrats who have never fought these fascists the way they need to be fought, who have never protected abortion the way it needs to be protected. I am talking about day after day, the struggle of the people from below in these streets until we compel those in power to restore legal abortion across this country, not a few sanctuary states, where women are left behind in Oklahoma and Texas, women are, who are in detention are left behind, women in prison are left behind, exactly like you said, poor women, young women who cannot travel. I am not talking about protecting a few areas for a few women, which will be shrinking anyhow if these fascists are not stopped. I am talking about legal abortion on demand across this country and then fighting for it around the world. This is on our hands right now. And history is being decided. Everybody in this country is being put to the test. If you accept this, it will only grow worse and it will be worse than you imagine and faster than you imagine. We have to draw a line now. We have to rise up. We have to reverse this decision now. You're obviously not going to change the court's opinion. They right. know that this is an unpopular decision. You're talking about legislation and that they couldn't get through the Senate. You think that enough people can pressure them with such an evenly divided Senate and Republicans so together on this issue? I think that even capitulationist, uh, common ground-seeking Democrats, and yes, even fascist Republicans can be compelled. They worry about the perceived legitimacy of their institutions. Everybody knows this decision from the Supreme Court was illegitimate. If people come out and show our opposition, I think it can force the kind of political crisis where they have to make concessions. In reality, that's how all our rights have been won. Voting rights weren't won by voting, they were won in the streets by people sitting down, doing freedom rides, going on hunger strike, going to jail. LGBTQ rights and marriage equality was won by people rising up. Abortion rights was won by people going in the streets and raising hell. This is how you force power to concede. Frederick Douglass said it years ago, power concedes nothing without a demand, never has, never will. Do I think it's realistic that they will restore abortion rights if we sit home? Hell no. Do I think if we come out and raise bloody hell, the majority of us, one in four women who's had an abortion, all the women and the men and the doctors who remember the back alley deaths, foreclosed lives before 1973, all the young people in fear for their future, if we flood these streets and don't go home, absolutely we can compel them to restore legal abortion on demand across this country, and nothing less than that is acceptable. Ms. Taylor, thank you so much for your insight. I definitely appreciate you, and uh, obviously,